Did you know that fuel combustion is a chemical reaction that produces energy? Hey everyone, this is Mr. Lara, and in this video we will be learning about chemical reactions and how they relate to the law of conservation of mass. So let's begin by looking at the properties of elements. Elements are made up of atoms. These atoms determine the element's physical and chemical properties based on the number of protons and electrons. These unique properties can be used to identify the elements involved in a chemical reaction. During a chemical reaction, the atoms rearrange and combine to form new substances. The reacting elements are called reactants, and the new substance is called the product. That's why the product always has a different chemical identity. But how can we tell that a chemical reaction happened? There are generally five signs that we can look for to figure out whether a chemical reaction has taken place. The first sign is the production of light. For example, when we light a matchstick, the chemical reaction starts and energy in the form of light is produced. The second sign is the absorption or emitting of energy. A burning matchstick gives off heat energy and chemical reactions like photosynthesis and dissolving salt and water absorb heat from their surroundings. The third sign is when the color of the product is different from the color of the reactant. This color change is usually permanent and often happens between two liquids and some solids and gas. For instance, rust is a chemical reaction and the surface of the metal changes to an orange-brownish color. The fourth sign is the formation of a precipitate. This usually happens when two liquid solutions chemically react with each other. The fifth sign is when gas is produced. In such chemical reactions, the product has a distinct smell or gaseous vapors become visible. Chemical reactions are always happening in the real world, but how can we describe them? We use chemical equations to show what's happening in a chemical reaction. Chemical equations are useful for explaining the process of reactants changing into products. They also help us explain what kind of changes and how the atoms of the elements rearrange to form new substances in a chemical reaction. Not only that, but chemical equations also help illustrate how the law of conservation of mass is followed. This means that the total amount of the substance on the reactant side will always be equal to the total amount of substance on the product side of a chemical equation. That's why it is important for chemical equations to demonstrate a balance both in the reactant side and the product side. But how do we balance chemical equations? We use coefficients. Coefficients are numbers that we place in front of the chemical formulae to show how many of their molecules are involved in the chemical reaction. Let's look at a chemical equation that shows the formation of water. In this equation, two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen react to produce two molecules of water. This equation is balanced. We have four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms in the reactant side. And on the product side, we have two molecules of water. So this means there are four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. If we do not balance a chemical equation, then this means that the chemical reaction is violating the law of conservation of mass, which is impossible. That's for you we just learned. Elements are made up of atoms and the atoms determine the chemical and physical properties of the element. In a chemical reaction, atoms rearrange and combine to form new substances with entirely different properties. The evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred is when light is produced, heat is emitted or absorbed, the color of the reactant changes, and there is a formation of gas or a precipitate. Chemical equations describe the chemical reactions that occur in the natural world. Coefficients are used to balance chemical equations to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. A chemical reaction can never violate the law of conservation of mass. That's why a chemical equation must always be balanced.